Hello and welcome to the second episode of this Karate Kata podcast. Uh, today we are going to go over Geon, uh, one of the older kata. When I say older, I mean like not the Heians, which were uh, created for, as like a derivation from these older ones. Um, once again, in case you're new to this, um, we are going to be going over the Shotokan uh, version of this form, uh, but don't take the diagram you see before you um, as exact. Um, also, once again, uh, credit to, let me zoom in on this guy's name here, credit to Albrecht Pfluger for the, uh, you guys see that? There. Credit to Albrecht Pfluger or the creating these images originally. If you had the opportunity, please buy his book. Um, I like giving him credit because you, you search up any of these kata online, you always see his pictures. No one ever gives him credit. Um, when I first tried to find his book, it took me quite a while. I had to ask in forums because like everybody knew what I was talking about. No one knew where it came from. The, the publication, as far as I know, is only in German. So that doesn't help, but, um, that's what these images are. I have digitally enhanced and colorized them for your viewing pleasure. All right, so jumping right in. Um, actually, first, uh, let, let me clarify as well with the uh, application and these uh, of these techniques. Uh, what I'm what I'm aiming for here, okay, is techniques that we can take out of. Um, out of the kata, and we can then transfer them into training, real life training for full contact fighting. Um, most of what I have, what I find in the kata, I believe probably were the original intended purpose of these movements. But uh, at the same time, I'm not going to restrict myself to just that, because what I want is to find a value in the old kata and and keep those pertinent and, and usable for modern combative sports. So that's our goal today and always, uh, and just bear that in mind. Um, yeah, because like the kata, the kata, the, what they are, they're monomic tools, right? They're, they're patterns of movement to help you remember something. And that's something in this case, in the case of karate is fighting. Uh, I just feel like way too often nowadays, people, they do the kata and they have no idea what they're actually doing. And so the monomic purpose originally intended by that is just gone. So we're going to fix that. And maybe you agree with me on some of this. Maybe you don't. That's fine. But what I want is just to spread what I know and what I've practiced. And I, I've, I've done these techniques with my own students. Uh, I know they work. I'm just hoping other people do them too. Okay, sorry, small rant, that's over. First technique, let's move on. Uh, so Gion, um, what do I got a waiting cursor, that was weird. So Gion opens up, we have like this uh, introductory bow thing with the hands over the top like that. And we then move into this upward and lower block motion. Um, here that's described as Uche Uke and Gedambara at the same time, which is like outside block and low block. Um, and then he turns and you got this segment over here. But let's just focus on just this, this upwards and lower blocking motions. Um, anytime I see like two blocks in a kata, I always just completely reject the idea that you're simultaneously blocking two things because it's basically a waste of time, right? Uh, very rarely are you going to have somebody like, okay. So like, like older, I, I looked at an old karate manual once, for example, describing this block, right? And it had a guy doing a front kick with their left foot and doing a, a straight punch with their right hand. And they're like blocking them at the same time. Like nobody's going to attack you like that. And even if they do just worry about your head. Um, no. So what's, what is this movement track here? So we have like a down and we got an up at the same time. Uh, I want you to 
imagine pretty much always with these techniques is this is a transi transition in space, right? So punch is coming towards my face. I'm going to move in close to them. Or I guess with the kata, you step back. That would work too. But you have an attack coming towards you. You're going to turn parry downwards and then back knuckle the face at the same time. One, pushing down. Two, coming over the top. One, two, one, two. Um, a lot of kind of stuff. Like, it reminds me of, like, what they do in, what is it, like, Jeet Kune Do or Wing Chun, where they have, like, this kind of movement here. So, same thing here. Um, and I, I, I like to emphasize here that it's, like, not just standing there and, like, block, you know, block and back knuckle, but you're either moving in to get on top of them or they're moving in quickly to get on top of you. And you're just trying to trap an arm or whatever against them and counter attack at the same time. So think about that, like, bam, struck you in the nose and blocked your attack or trapped your arm. Makes a whole lot more sense than, you know, blocking a punch and a kick that are simultaneously coming towards you. Um, for the purpose of drilling this, when you have a, a partner with you, you know, you take your fighting stances or whatever here, somebody punches, you block and back knuckle at the same time. You just kind of do this. Uh, and you can move with it, transition, walking back and forth across the room with it. Um, I feel like it's something that's like not super like that kind of movement where you're like, you're like checking down and counter attacking and you have like this alternating elbow thing going on. That's not something you see in a lot of like modern combative sports. So if you do pull this on somebody, they probably won't be expecting it, which I like. Okay. Next technique. So now we have this here. Now. You're probably going to be like, oh, yeah, you know, I know what's going on here. You got like somebody's like grabbing onto our like shirt or our jacket. And we're going to go between the arms and grab them. They're going to kick them. And they're going to punch them away. Um, at least karate guys, that's probably what your sensei told you. Or, you know, just in intuition. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, that's definitely one, not going to work. And two, that's not what this is. As always, not what that is. Um, as you think about, okay, somebody's grabbing onto you and you're going to do this and pull them into, how are you going to, how are you going to kick when you're right here, when they're like on top of you, can I kind of move my camera? When you're holding onto them like this close, how are you going to kick them? You're not. And I, I've seen this modified where it's like, you know, you grab onto when you can do a knee strike and you punch them away and box out. Yeah, that would work. That, 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 that absolutely would work. Uh, but what I want to point you guys to is, uh, shoot, Shorinru. Uh, the, I think it was a Shorinru or Shitoru. I think it was Shorinru. I'll, I'll put the video clip here. I mean, it's probably already up because I'm rambling, but, uh, the way they do this kata is a little blur is different, right? So instead of going here, right, they go here and they go block punch and back like it's like Poosh. and that makes more sense like if somebody's coming from your you know 45 or your you know your three o'clock or your uh 10 o'clock or whatever two o'clock or 10 o'clock um and they're striking at you just going bam bam covering and countering at the same time that makes sense just like the first movement block and strike here block strike so Forget this, um, especially if you're training for full contact combative sport. Um, this, no one's going to be like, Ugh, grabbing onto you, right? People who grab you are not going to be doing to like Bart Simpson choke, right? They're going to be like shooting for your legs and taking you down. So one, two, bam, one movement instead of this. And then if you think about that, these next steps, what, three, four, five, that makes sense as well. Because you counter and block. Now you got them reeling back or just moving back possibly to, to get out of your counter. So you follow up with that longer kick. So now it comes block, punch, kick. You're moving towards them. And you go through with a boop, punch the microphone. <laughs> sure that was loud. Punch, punch, punch. Bam, bam, bam. You're blitzing on them. Um, something really cool that, you know, if you, if you watch karate fighters fighting in combative sports you will see that that blitz and i love it it's just like karate bam 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 you're moving straight forward that moving forward and punching thing is something the karate does really well okay 
So there's that movement. And then it's repeated steps, seven, eight, nine, uh, 10. And then we get up to here. And now we're in a new sequence here, right? So now we have block rising and punch. Block rising, punch. And you do that a couple times until you get to the end. The last one, you do block rising step and the punch. When I say rising, I mean like, well, just realized I moved my canvas. Don't want to do that. When I say rising, I mean like, this is a rising block versus open hand. <clears throat> okay. So what's, what's going on here? Um, again, karate guys do this weird all the time, right? Because we're thinking like long range, straight different chamber straight karate punch to your face right so you'll see karate guys and they'll be like ha i'm gonna block your punch on the wrist on the wrist where it's moving the fastest and then try to counter strike from a million miles away um so no if someone's punching you that's that's not gonna work your punches are they're, they're quick right and i can be like i can drag this up here uh i've seen also thoughts like oh you know Maybe we're going to block that punch with this open hand and grab it. And I'm going to smash the elbow and break the elbow in half. Again, probably not. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that wouldn't work. But what I am saying is that as a, as a drill for, for sport fighting or just, you know, whatever, um, it's hard to train something that you're breaking a limb. Let me say that again. It's hard to train something that you're breaking a limb because not many guys are going to be like, all right, you practice breaking my arm this month. And then a couple months from now, when I'm recovered, we'll switch and I'll break your arm. Right. Like you, you can't train that. What you can train is a sweep and a, and a throw. So I want you to imagine instead. Um, so again, somebody coming in from a, like a 45 degree angle from like your two o'clock or your 10. Okay. Uh, and they're coming with a strike. You're going to bring your hand up and you're going to cover, but it's not going to be like whoop out here. You're going to cover, right? They're coming in from this direction. And as you do so, you then going to bring your other hand up and you're going to come across. So one, then you're going to come across under the throat and you're right on top of them. You do that stepping motion where your foot comes around. And so your leg hooks around their ankle and pushes them over. It's a, a I always get this wrong. It's another reaping throw, right? Um, so going under the chin, pulling them back and pushing them in. That's what this movement is. And that is what you can train in your dojo, right? Move in, wrap the leg, push against the chin and push them over. Um, I am sure I can find a clip of that. I would show you guys with my own partner, but I don't have one right now. Uh, as I mentioned in my last video, I recently moved. I don't have students like right this moment and I can't really start teaching because COVID. So I'm making videos because I'm bored someday. Hopefully not too far. I will find a training partner willing to deal with COVID and, and I'll show some of these techniques in real life. Moving on. Let's see here. There we go. So 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Okay, so what's going on here? So we turn and we have this right here, right? This is what in my last video I was like, that's not that. We'll talk about that. Now we're talking about it, okay? So what's what's going on here when we have this upwards and downwards motion? Um, this one is, is a little bit tricky. And if you do look at um, the movement here, it, it's a little bit hard to see the way it's presented because like in the kata, you're looking here and like you're striking over here or something or over there. What's happening here is somebody's behind you, okay? And they've grabbed a hold of you over the top of your arms. So first movement, you've got to create space um, around your body so that they're not crushing you. Okay. So they're around here. I'm going to put one arm high, one arm low and turning and pushing their hands, which are, you know, wrestler grip or whatnot 
something like that, or that, or that, or whatever. <clears throat> Pardon me. Around your chest, right? So I'm going to go up and low, high, turning, opening the space here so that I have room to move. Now, with this high block, I got somebody over here, again, behind me, but their arms come over the top, and I lift this up just a little bit. I'm going to reach over, and as I pull my arms back, this kind of motion, right? Before I do this, this kind of motion here. I'm going to grab onto their uh, their elbow and their shoulder and hip throw across. So create, so I'm just grabbing you, create space, open up your chest, like my shirt. It's awesome. Then grab their shoulder, hip throw from behind you, throwing them over your shoulder or over your hip. That's what that is. Um, please, none of you try to punch somebody like this. That makes no shit sense, even in like a clinch. Okay. Bam, bam. Moving on. Moving on. I feel like I take way too long with some of these because I like to ramble. So what do we got here in 22, 23, 24, 25? Yeah. We got this block and then we have like this, what do they call it? Schulte or whatnot with this palm hill to the side, right? So what are we doing here? Let me take my headphones off. Okay. So we can use that downward block as an entrance again. Bam, here. And we now are moving in towards them. And as we do so, this palm, this palm is going to come through. And we're going to push and pull. So down block or out block, either one. I'm grabbing onto them. They're grabbing onto me. Either way, I'm pulling whatever is being held on over on this side back. And I'm going to check them in the hip to off balance them or across the face. And we can end up throwing them with that later. So boom, pushing through, pulling through here. And then we do the same thing this side, same thing this side. Um, if, if you watch like, this is the same kind of drill. If you, if you watch like judo guys uh, practicing, here comes my furnace, dang it. Um, <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna have to go turn that off here in a second. Okay, sorry, we're back. Um, anyways, what was I saying? Uh, if you watch uh, judo guys or people just grappling in general, there was really basic exercise. You know, they got to hold the elbow, they got hold of the uh, the collar, the lapel, and they they do this pushing back and forth, trying to position their uh, their opponent's foot and uh, hip uh, placement. And that's essentially what's going through here is we're pulling and pushing across, controlling them. Really easy drill that you actually can do in class with a partner, full contact. That makes sense. So I really love this. Um, would you take it from a side horse stance? Probably not. But the transition from blocking and entering into close on somebody's range and then moving here and pushing them and controlling them. I feel like that's a really valuable exercise. Um, I've al I've also seen it done where instead of a instead of a push like this, they come up like that. And if that's the case, was is a Gojuru that does this? I think might have been Shorunru again. I know I watched several videos of just different stylistic tendencies with these forms, and there was one of them that did this sort of a movement where they came in and they scooped. Um, that could honestly just be the same thing. You're pushing to the bicep, turning the arm in, wrapping around the back of the tricep. Bam, bam. Or wrist lock. But again, wrist locks are hard to train for because you can't really do them full contact, full speed without like, you know, breaking somebody's arm or whatever. So as far as like a drill in school goes, practice manipulating weight in foot position. Okay. So you do that and go down the middle of the eye. And now we have this. And then this is, a, again, another one of the techniques that you look at different styles or schools of karate and they do it differently. Um, some, instead of doing like the high and low again, they'll do two hands low or something different. Um, for this one, I'm going to throw this just same, same basic drill as we had for like 18 and 19 where somebody's behind you, you're creating space and throw them. Uh, for variety in teaching a class on this kata, 
Like the first one I would do like is a hip throw up in movements 18 and 19. Um, and then for 27 through 29, I would do a shoulder throw. Um, and you can you can see that too here. Right? Bam, shoulder throw. So, minimal exercises just remind you of what you're doing. Here we go. This this movement here confused me for a little bit until I started thinking about like the actual like the theme for this kata. I feel like there's a theme here. There's lots of attacks from behind. So we have like this hands high, and you go low. Some different styles don't do it that exactly that way, but they all have the basic same like your hands come up here, your feet are together, you take a big step forward. You got this this cross as you step forward. Um, some of the other ones go to here instead of a cross block, they go into here. Um, I think I saw one that does like double push with their hands. Um, but they all have like this big movement inwards where they're rounding the shoulders and they step back. Um, so this one here. I'm going to move my chair. It's going to be basically just like what we saw before with a grab from behind. So if somebody's going to grab me from behind, I can create space, do move my arms around. I can move forward. And as I move forward, um, they got their arms around me, remember? I'm going to con make a concave cavity here with my chest and round my back, push my butt back into them and throwing the arms off my body with this big swooping motion here like that. Um, kind of a cool escape. Um, I don't know if there's a ton more you can do with it besides just that, but I feel like it's practical. There goes my camera. I feel like it's useful. I feel like it's something we should continue to, uh, continue to explore though. Um, continue to explore. What do I mean by that? What I mean there is I'm, I don't have everything perfect. I'm not going to claim to have everything perfect. But this is the best I got right now. And if I ever think of something better, or if you, better yet, if you, you, can show me something better, please do. Please share. Because if, if I find something that's better than what I'm teaching right now, I'll switch to teaching that. So yeah, if you, if you guys see like a technique, and you're like, oh, that's stupid. Here, do this instead. I will, I will call you out. I will say, hey, thanks to that guy right there who taught me something. Because I'm not perfect. I don't claim to be. I just think I have some good ideas. Whew. All right, <laughs> moving on. Okay, so this next bit um, is similar to what we had at towards the beginning, right? Where we had this movement here where I block and strike to the face. Um, this time though, it's from up high. So anytime I see high cross blocks, um, what that makes me think of is just entering, right? So uh, somebody's at a, a slightly longer distance. I want them to be there out here and I want to get in close on them or I want to at least get closer so I can hit them. So I'm going to bring my hands up and I'm going to protect my face. Uh, when I teach the kids, I call this like a bulldozer. So you like bulldozer shield thing here, All right? So we're going to go in here. And as I get in close, maybe they come for like a hook across the face. I'm going to block and strike to the face. One, two, right? And then I can switch and strike them again. Boom, boom. And that's what this is, right? So you come in here, we strike them. Maybe we trap an uh, arm against them again, back knuckle them to the face again. But it's a really basic drill, I feel like, where you're just closing distance, blocking whatever they have come towards you as you are what they're throwing at you as you're moving in close and counter striking against them. Um, specifically here, 34, they have the high block. 35 is the punch. 36, there's my wife calling me. Hold on. Okay. And we're back. Um, all right. So I feel like we got pretty good on the, uh, cross motion down here through the middle of the form. Let's move on to uh, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41. Um, this is actually a good, good, good time to bring this up. So in a lot of these forms, 
uh, you will see this uh, outside block. You know, one, two, one, two. Outside block punch motion, right? Um, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. Uh, I would say as far as, as training goes with a partner, keep it as exactly that. Uh, not necessarily with the, with the great big, you know, outside block that's like clear out here, right? Instead, bring in and just bam, right? Uh, when, I, when we're doing blocks in, in real life, real life, okay? Um, it's never out here reaching, trying to get something usually, right? If something's coming towards you, punch, kick, whatever, um, most of the time you've got split second decision, just got to bam, bam. Yeah. So here, punch is coming towards me. Again, shrink outside, bam, and then fall through punch, bam, bam. And I feel like that's actually a really good, just bam, punch, bam, moving close and punch, or bam, move back and punch while you're moving back. But for the purpose of training, that's a really good thing. Maybe I should face the microphone. One, two, right? Push out here, just real close, bam, here. Not out there, just here, boom, 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 boom. Or same thing with the inward block, right? So someone's going here, I'm just gonna turn, bam, bam. And that works. Um, I, I had a, a teacher once who was you know, talking about blocks. He would say, you know, it's the block has to happen. Uh, everything after that is Christmas, which is fitting because it's almost Christmas right now. But block one, two. This has to happen. Keep yourself protected into this bubble here. And then anything after that, if you create an opening, great. So yeah, anytime we see that, that's what that is. Entering into somebody's space. Um, moving a hand or a kick or something to the outside and punching to the center. All right. Now, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. I love this. We have the downward block going back down the middle. And then we have the over the top, these hammer fists, right? 43, 44, 45. Again, depending on the karate style you're doing, you have different things that they'll do in the form for application. What I like here, Funakoshi's spinning top throw. It's in the Kuroido Kyohan. Um, just the end camp made a, a blog article about these types of throws. I'll probably still his picture here. Cause I still can't find my manual. Um, spinning top throw. So whereas before, right? When we went, when we went down the middle of the form before, we had like this pushing movement here, right? Well, let's take that step further. Okay. So let's say we're here, right? We got like this clinching sort of position, um, further distance than the clinch. We're doing like bicep control, right? And let's say we got block here, go on to the inside and then we're going to come through here and we're going to pull. Uh, so instead of pulling their outside arm though, let's pull the cross arm. So we'll go from here to across. So my left arm grabs their left arm, right hand comes through and into the elbow. And what I like about this is you actually can practice this one full speed with the partner because you don't have to like snap an elbow here. Okay. Um, as you come in here, you pull the arm back and think of like an arm bar, right? Jiu Jitsu arm bar. I'm just pushing as I'm turning, pushing into the elbow as I'm pulling the arm back and driving them towards the ground. And once they're dead there, you can put them into a cool shoulder lock. That's what this uh, this middle part is here, right? Grab, pushing across one, pushing across two, pushing across three, pull, and spinning top throw. Again, if you haven't seen the picture yet, I'll put it up sometime, probably again here. Spinning top throw. Um, I feel like there's another analog I can use for this from like Aikido, just something's ringing a bell. Back here in the back of my mind from years ago. If I can think of it, I'll put it up here as well. Okay. Now moving on to the last segment of this form. At the end of the form, we have 
kind of a weird looking movement if you don't really get what's going on here again right what we have like this grab and then here and the other side here again um what i want to practice here is it's it's it's, it's a grab somebody's grabbing a hold of your like your, your shoulder or your bicep you can come in here and you're gonna not underneath though over the top one and then you cross over the top two into the into the chin so grab their arm punch across into their face and the same thing on the other side one two um and as far as like if you're fighting somebody like in in sparring um this could still be like let's say somebody goes and they attempt to take you down with an arm drag um where you know they, they go they grab the arm they want to pull you to the ground or they grab your elbow and they want to pull you to the ground one trap their wrist and you're doing this kind of a motion boom push their hand down and keep a hold of the hand that you've just grabbed a hold of in this manner or this manner either one and you punch them or you create space here and you can sweep them here and do the scooping throw that we talked about last time um i really like that one actually grabbing hold of you bam push that down or bam from here push that down and strike open up their arm sweep them there's lots of cool things you can do from that okay my lighting is weird because i record in the basement and then that's just what i have available okay guys well that's it uh top to bottom that is Gion. Um, so thanks for joining me. Tell me what you think. Um, I actually do really want to get input on these things. So if you happen to stumble across these videos, you know, they'll probably be like five views when you see this or less. Um, but when you stumble across this, and if you make it through the whole video in my antics and ranting um try out what i've what i have here grab a partner try it out hopefully soon i'll be able to demonstrate these with the partner just covid right now anyways try these out tell me what you think if you can think of a better application or a better drill that you can do in a class share it please let me know i'm super excited for input um Moving forward, uh, the next form I'm going to do is probably going to be either like the Basai, Basai, like Basai Dai, Basai Show, or I could do Nihonchi slash uh, Teki, or I could do um, Kushanku, Kanku Dai, Kanku Show. Um, all of them really, really awesome. Just kind of depends on what I want to do next, but. Um, that's what we're looking for. I'll do all of those eventually. Not sure what I'm going to do next, but there we're at. That's where we're at right now. Um, thanks for listening, watching, commenting. Please comment. I don't even care if you subscribe. Just comment. I'm lonely. <laughs> Until next time. Sayonara.